Now in this case, I'm using a white paper plate and I'm going to lay my colors out on that white paper plate because it's white and then I can better discern the colors that I'm mixing on that white plate as opposed to doing it on something dark like a piece of wood or something. Um, don't need a lot. Squeezing out uh, just a hair or a small amount of each of the colors. The um, yellow okra, the burnt umber. I've already put the red on. And then finally the white. And again, the white is just to sort of temper those colors or tone those colors down where, where it's necessary. And then I just leave them separate on the plate. And then I'll mix them in a, a different location on the plate to get those colors uh, as I work my way through this. Now I mixed up my finish as I, as I indicated. Now the first thing I need to do is to color out a broader, broader swath or broader uh, dimensional width of around the either side of the, the repair itself. And I'm going to try and darken down the entire wood just a little bit and try to blend it out. Now, faux painting, like any craft, is um, a compromise between efficiency and um, the craft itself or getting the work done. So there has to be some patience because sometimes this stuff can be tedious. And not only that, but you have to, in your patience, you have to realize you cannot press or push the, the physics of, or the chem chemistry of the products you're working with, in, in this case. Then I'm gonna start building layers, and that's what faux painting is. It's a, it's a construction of layers or layers over layers uh, in order to get the final look that you're looking looking to achieve. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I need to add the finish back. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of finish. And again, the finish becomes the binding agent for, I'm gonna add a little bit of that finish up through here. And then I'm going to start blending my colors into that finish. Now there is a definite red tone um, to the stock itself. So I'm going to tend to push this a little bit on the red side. And then bring that up through here. And already that's, that's making a difference. Uh, one of the problems I've got here a little bit is that it's a little too red. So let's add in a little bit more brown. And again, the idea is I do not want to make this so thick that it makes, it becomes so opaque that you don't uh, see the grain below it. All right, um, so there's that. I'm gonna to continue to pull that down a little bit thinner. All right. Anyway, my idea is to simply blend that off. Man, you don't get to see the color like I do. Unfortunately, the camera can't really pick that up the way I'd like it to. Now goes back and blends into what was there and I can see straight down into the grain so I haven't made it opaque that I'm hiding, hiding the uh, wood structure below. All right. Now again, here's the problem. I need to wait uh, at least 12 hours to let this harden uh, because if I go back and try to add another layer and that lower layer is still soft and again the, the finish is the binding agent, the finish needs to dry. And because the oils are mixed in with the finish, uh, it 
it'll just like on a painting that that somebody might do this um this is going to harden and then once it solidifies I, I can then go in and put the next layer over it i'll see you guys in about 12 or 24 hours so we blended the color off really well and now the repair itself or rather this wood that surrounds the repair uh, is colored and looks very almost exactly like the, the rest of the gunstock. I still have that line that was created by the, the epoxy itself. The line itself is, is solid or it's flat or it's, it's flush, but again the epoxy has thickness so now I need to make that line itself disappear. So what is the opposite of dark? The opposite of dark is light. So in order for, I'm going to reduce that impact of that line by adding in a, um, a, a light, over applying a lighter color over the top of that, blending that off, and then I can add back the color over the top of that when that's dried. So let's, let's start there. Going to add uh, white and burnt umber. This is just sort of figuring this out as you go. Just adding, adding a color. I'm trying to stay focused on the line. Okay, that's more of a gray, which is fine. And again, I'm trying to lighten up that epoxy. It's hard adding a dark color over a dark color. So by lightening up that epoxy line, when I go to paint in the final colors, I'm painting it over white and not over over black or the appearance of black. That actually looks very good. Okay, so that line now has the appearance of being white, which is good, or whitish or gray. And that is going to be easier for me to blend over with a darker color tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right, so yesterday we painted out that that uh, epoxy line with a with a gray slash tan color. And again, the opposite of dark is light. So we painted that out with that lighter color. And the the epoxy line itself has disappeared. Now with that crack or the line itself gone, essentially I can now begin to paint over that and then paint in the, the, the grain coloring itself, uh, which is the faux itself. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have, we have several uh, prominent grain lines and one of those, uh, th th there's, there is the walnut brown itself. And then there are these grain lines that, that we're gonna try to highlight in order to draw the eye away from the, the crack itself. We'll bring this in, and then we'll bring this in. All right. And, and I want to keep this fairly transparent. I got to have a little opacity because if I don't have it opaque or have it, um, have the, pigments dark enough and all I can see through is the is the wood below completely then I'm not really painting out the the cracks so we're trying to find this blend or this balance between seeing the seeing the wood grain but also at the same uh, point we're trying to hide hide the crack itself all right all right we're going to stop right there and then that, 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 that color is, is just about perfect. So we're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to use a finer brush and then we're going to paint that, um, those darker uh, grain lines that, um, that, are, that are 
true to this this particular gun and that'll help again the idea is we're trying to fool the eye we're trying to steer steer the eye away from from the repair and into the the color of the, the wood itself all right so the next thing we need to do uh, is to paint in or faux in those character lines or dark lines or grain lines that represent the walnut or in this case this walnut we have some pretty distinct lines that that come around we're going to try to color those in and make them uh, have that character of the wood stand out just a little bit a little bit more i'm gonna grab a little bit of black and see if i can't darken that a little bit more Now in this case I'm using an ivory black. I'm actually going to try and turn that line almost completely black. And then we'll see what that looks like. Just sort of follow that. That's much better. <clears throat> now I've done this on, on a lot of repairs, on a lot of gun stocks. There's a uh, Springfield custom that I worked on, one of my earliest videos actually in the uh, channel. And I had to do a lot of this. There was a lot of repairs and a lot of patches. <clears throat> I literally needed to make all those repairs disappear. Same thing, we're going to let that dry overnight and then we'll come in and we'll start putting our finish on. Probably put three, four, or five coats on, thin coats. Once again, we'll see you tomorrow. So again, we're starting out with a real, with a real thin coat. And we don't want to rub too hard because underneath this is all of those uh, colored finishes or colored um, the, the faux coloring that, that I've added. So I don't want to rub so hard that, that I've rubbed that off. I want to give that a chance to stay in place. And then I'm putting this, this first thin coat is a protective layer over those colors. And the nice thing about the finish is it gives a level of transparency that pushes its way down through into the wood and the wood grain below it. So anyway, all right, that's first coat. And I'm not going to bring you back for every coat. I'm going to probably put on, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight thin coats. And uh, you don't need to watch every one of those coats because it's going to go on just, just like what I've done. And again, the objective is, is to, to sort of fill in whatever is left of that crack with finish and then to make the whole the whole thing disappear as much as I can. When I'm done, I'll bring you back and I'll give you some before and afters, so don't go away. 
The project's done. By the time you see this video, it'll be back on its way to Tennessee and its owner. So I'm gonna post a before and after just before I close out the video so you get to see where I started and where we ended up on this. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring that bell so you get notified the next time I post a video. I'll see you in the next one.